Okay. Yeah. So when you open it, you have something like this. The first, this part is what we call script, where I have library, BJava, and so forth. So I can start typing. So the keywords are what you that are uh, blue in color, right? Okay, if I start typing, okay, and you see, this is one of the advantages of our studio too. As soon as I start typing anything, it will give me all the functions that comes with that. So if I start with A, every function, data set, that is in R at that particular time will be displayed and then I can go in and on and click on whichever. So more from this, it means you don't have to be typing the full extent of whatever. Pardon me. I should, okay. You don't need to um, type everything that you need to do. So that's one the base R will not do that. If you open that, you must close. If you don't close, there will be problem. And so forth. But here, once you start, it will close it for you. Then you, you go in and, and do it. So that's the beauty of, 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 of R. So here is like a script that you use to write. So that's why we do all our write-ups over there. Is everybody okay with it? Yeah. Okay. Now, down there, then you see console, right? The console is where we get all the things that we run. If we execute anything, we'll get the results there. And the function will also be executed over there, or the expression will be executed over there. So for example, let me get a new one so that I don't. Um, so let's say this one, everybody knows, right? Five plus seven, right? Okay, so I can run this, you see over here, the arrow is run, which means execute. Is everybody okay? So if I want to execute, I must just be on the line. I, it can be in front, in the middle, or at the end. So the cursor can be anywhere at all. So if I do this, you see down there, you see that five has been added to seven. The answer has been provided, and it is just one object over there. So the first thing is one into square bracket, then the answer for this. And we know that this one R is right because five plus seven will give you 12. Is everybody okay? Yeah, okay. So that's the console, the script. We can also write on the console, but if you write on the console, it's not good practice because you can't be storing them. You cannot store what is on the console. However, if I write on the um, script, even if there's light off and everything goes off, the next time I open our studio, it will come again. Yeah, so always cultivate the habit of putting everything you want to do on the script. And then you run, then it appears on the console. Okay, now, then when I move to the other side, the terminal and background jobs, you can forget about it later on if you want, you can explore. But I'm touching on the important things you need now. Then on the far right, the top corner, you see environment, right? It is now empty, isn't it? Because I have not stored anything. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about what we call the assignment statement. Now, before I started, remember, you see, I have done hash, hash, hash. Hash means comment. Okay. So, in a, if I write something and I don't comment it out, it will assume that it's a code that needs to be run. And I will not understand the sentence assignment statement. So, you get an error to tell you that there's nothing like that in there. Okay. So I will use this to organize the notes that we do. Hash. You just need one. But because of the organization, I may use more than one. That, that's, that's the concept. Okay. Now, so I want to now store the results of what? 
5 and 7. If I store, then it will appear on the console. So, sorry, on the, on the console as well as the environment. So the environment is your storage area. The console will display your results. Is that okay? All right. Okay, so now, how do we now do our assignment so that it is stored? That's the next thing I'm going to do now. So, to store it, I may give it any name at all. These are we have naming conventions. So, for example, don't start your name with a, a, a figure. So, like maybe to me or to app. No, so don't do that. And then also, you shouldn't use keywords to store. So, for example, T is transpose, right? Small letter T is transpose. Capital letter T is true. Okay, so when you are, as we go on, you know the functions. When you are naming your objects, you don't name it with T. When you do that, you confuse out. So the next time you call T, it doesn't know whether it is true or T is 10. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, okay. So you get something. So if I want to use maybe T, I will use maybe capital T and small T together. And so forth. R is also case sensitive. So small letter A is not the same as capital letter A. So these are the basic, basic, basic things that you need to know. Other than that, it, it, it doesn't make R, you won't enjoy it. Because every time you run, it will be a, a, a problem. And especially when we have to examine you because we have no other alternative. <laughs> so our, we'll, I'll give you exercises okay, in the course of the semester that you will do. And then also we'll do an I. Um, yeah, sometimes I give it to you and then you do it. Sometimes if I think you are not doing individual works and so forth, then I send you to UGC. Then we'll give you a computer on your phone and then you do it for us to see. So the final exam will go there, but that will constitute maybe 50% or maybe 40% depending on. I can do it 40, you do, if you are not doing well, I do it 40 so that the class will take 60%. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, so basically by the time we get to the exam, that okay this one I, this course i cannot do a reset for you because it means i have to i have to come for another 30 <laughs> so once you register you must pass okay we don't want you to go to year two and then you are still in year one okay so just just as i said just cultivate the habit every day make sure you take like an hour and start practicing. And all the courses that you are doing, they will be giving you assignments and so forth. Whatever you do, you must try and program it. Once you do that, by the time you end up after your one year courseway, you are good to go. And whatever you need to do, you can, you can do so. Okay, let me go back to my assignment. So what do I want to, maybe I can name it add. You see, there are so many ads in there. So you see, you, okay. There are so many, um, just a moment, let me allow people in. Okay. Yeah, so add. So I can say this is equal to five plus or seven. Okay, then I run it. Please note what is going to happen. In the, what happened? What do you see? What are the changes you see? Any change, anything, any observation, just mention it. In the environment, there is now add and it is a value. So it tells you that this is a value. Is everybody okay? All right. Then what about the console? Add. So what we run now is displayed over there. Okay. Now, you see, the first one, we saw the results on the console. Now we are not seeing the result. And it's simple because it has assigned it to add. Okay. 
if I want to assign it and as well see it on the console, I can put everything in parentheses like this. So I can I, I first want to remove. So removing objects. So I, even though I'm, we will still be going through some of these things. Removing objects. How do I remove objects? It, you you use RM. So RM is a function. It's already predefined. Okay, in R. So you see RM list. So and so. If I, I'll come to help. So later on. But this means remove. What do I want to remove? Add, right? I can only remove something that I have put there. So I am removing add. So I'm running this. What do you notice? It is no more in the environment. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So usually this function is also good whenever you want to do, um, you want to run any program. Let's say you are doing examination and then I send you somewhere. When you start, you should remove everything in that. Otherwise, there will be conflict because maybe you are running a function. Somebody has already defined an object in there with the name add. And you even wrote your own. You did not even run it. So that add will take what has been run previously. And so you can remove everything in your environment and then you start. How do you remove it? You see the brush over there. You can use a brush, you click on it, it will remove everything. Okay, so our studio makes things life easier. Okay, you have several ways of doing the same thing. But we can use add. So now I can go back there and click on add, right? Okay, sorry, and, and run add again. But the key thing is that now it is in parentheses. So look at what is going to happen. What is the difference between this and the previous one? Yes, yes. So the object is stored. We have it, the answer to also on the console. So that if you want that, you put it in parentheses. Okay. okay. So that that's it. So now we've seen what our environment is. It will store values. We have data functions. All of them will be stored over there. But the key thing also, or the, the other takeaway is that you can only have something in the environment if you do an assignment statement and you actually run it. Sometimes you forget by writing over there, I say it's a writing part. So if you write over there, it, it, it can't run by itself. You need to initiate run and then it is stored. Now, the next thing you see over there is called history, right? Okay, so I click on it. So history, you see, if you were following what, like, if you were writing as I was doing it, you have whatever we did over there. You see, I can also scroll back. You see, the last command was add five plus, so it's there. The next one was remove, right? You see, even my comment, they are all there. I can scroll back and it will tell me all the things I've been doing previously. So history keeps track of all the work you, you do. Yeah. So it means that if I even um, lose something, I can always go back to the history. Whatever I select over here, you see, I can say to console and then it will go to the console. Have you seen now it is at the console, right? Yeah, I can also to the source so that it will go to where it was written. So just explore. And I can save over here too. I can open another history file and so forth. Similarly, if you go to environment, you have all those there. We'll come back to import data sets and so forth. These are all things that will help us. So history, that's it. Connection and tutorial. Tutorial, if you can go through it to demonstrate how, how to do. If you have time, go there. There are videos over there for you too. It's also a shiny package. What is the shiny? How we can deploy R on the web, right? So if I write a program, I can 
send it, I can create a website right through it. Like, and then you can assess it just like you have um, um, any website at all. My battery, what is the size? I hope it doesn't go up. Okay, so that's it. Then let me come down here. So we are done with the top one. Okay. When I come here, files. So files will give me all. Basically, when you start R Studio, it resides in the in document. So any file that is in your document will be showing. But we can also direct R Studio to, to a particular folder. And that's all we'll be doing. So you create a folder for the class and then you store everything you will do in there. Plots, quite important. Remember, in statistics, there's descriptive statistics. In descriptive statistics, usually you have plots, right? Yeah, so this is where we'll see every plot we make in R. Okay, so I'll give an example so that you see how this can be done. But we will take plot on this one. Later on. Okay. So let me do this plot. Um, I'm just plotting one to ten. Then I want to see the plotting characters in R, also one to ten. I want to also see colors. So colors now you won't, but we'll take time to go through them. So let's see what happens. I run this command and it's over here. It's, uh, I was going. I thought it was at the point. Okay, so you see, this is not so. It's it's not that nice. This is one thing about R that makes it. You have absolute control over whatever you want to, especially graphs. Okay, so I'll do the basic one, and I'll I'll show you a package that you can use to get elegant graphics as well, called ggplot2. Yeah, so you can explore that as well as we move on. Okay. So I want to show you, just to whet your appetite now. You see the plotting area over here, or the top one, and you are not going to put anything there, right? We don't put a title on a figure because in your work, you will say figure down, down there, you say figure, so, so, and so. Uh, whatever a description of so so and so so there's no need to put title on top and then there's a figure table so we can close that part so r gives you that flexibility unlike let's say spss or excel or some other program so look at i'm going to plot the same thing but i'm going to issue a command to you know minimize that space on the right on the right y as is i don't need anything there on the top, I don't need anything there. X, the um, X and the other, the left Y, you may need labels over there. So there you give some space. Okay. We will talk about all this, so don't worry. I just um, use it. So I use this power, mar this is margin, so to speak. So the margin one, one, and then I, I run this, and then I run this again. You see the difference now? So now I can show my graph quite well. That space is, is, is no more. So, so it means sometimes you take reports and the graph itself is quite small in there and then there's a graph. You can't write over there if you take it to work or later, you can't write over there. Yeah, so there's no need. So R, in R, you have absolute control over, over this. But the key thing here is that when we plot, this is where it will be. The next thing is what package. So packages I've talked about it. So here, if you click on it, if you have not installed any package, the, what you have there are the default packages. They are basic one. Remember, it's over twenty thousand, and some are huge, especially those that deals with data set from other. Let's say if you have a package that deals with genome, genome science, and so forth, they have a lot of data. So maybe one package is maybe four gigabytes. If you multiply this, if the let's say they have even hundred, then you multiply, it won't fit on your on your laptop. Yeah. So there's a basic one, and then you add on as and when you need it. 
If you are not doing multivariate explicit analysis, you don't need that. The first one we looked at on your laptop. So as and when you need it, you, you install. How do you install it? So that's what we're going to do now. So, so to install it, you just click on install over. You must be connected to the internet. Is that okay? And then you install it. Okay. So how do you, you just type the name in there. Okay. So how do I, let, let, I'm going to type anything, right? Okay. Remember I said ggplot2. So ggplot, I start. You see, anything with gg will show. Okay. And then I can scroll down. Maybe ggplot2. I have it already, so it won't, um, yeah. But if you want to install it, Always also make sure that this is tick. By default, it is tick. So a package, you see in programming, you don't reinvent it. Or you don't reinvent it. So what does that mean? Whenever I'm building a package, I build it upon existing one. So then we call those one dependent. Okay, so when you are installing it, so you install it together with the dependent. Otherwise, the package will not function properly. So make sure it is safe so that it will install every uh, this package needs to work. Okay. So if I click on this, it it takes a bit of time because ggplot2 is it's, it's a bit. Um, I think it is in megabytes. So you see, it's downloading three megabytes and so forth and so forth. So it will take time and then. See, it's still and so forth. So it will do so, and then it is installed. Once it is installed, then you have access to its content. Is that okay? And then you can you can use it. Okay. Now, so when you install, if you try when you go home and you install anything, it will now be organized under user library. So the system library. As of now, you have system library. When you install some, then it becomes what? A user library. So I would differentiate between the base packages and the one that the user has downloaded. Sometimes, let's say you have your laptop elsewhere, but if you don't have internet and you came to, um, let's say the departure, you have internet, you can also download the package and then when you go, you install it, just like we do for any program. Okay. Now, if you want to do so, you go to the Alcran page where I went there was packages, right? Or even Google, you just type the name of the package. So maybe um, ggplot2 package. Google, then you click on it, and then you go and um, download the tar file. I can just demonstrate to you. So let's say... I want to download, let's say, um, uh, this um, a package called Life um, Insurance. So, Life Insurance Data. So, I'll just type this Life Insurance Package. Insurance Package. So, the, ah, no. Um, uh, not life insurance, it's insurance data. <laughs> okay, life insurance data. You see, it is giving me, sorry, it is giving me a link. Um, like, um, it, it says insurance data package in old R. So I can click on that. Okay, then you see CRAN. That's where we went to. Okay, so I can click on this. Okay, then it, it sends me to the Alcran page. When I go there, if you scroll down, you will see insurance data tar.gz, right? I can click, that's a package source. As soon as you click on it, it downloads it, okay? What I'm showing now, I ask you in the exam. <laughs> so I can ask you to describe practically if what I'm showing you now, some packages are updated, right? 
if you don't, if you send it to the, you know, people will be using it and they will be, you will be getting feedback on bugs and so forth. So they expect that you update it. If you don't update it for a while, they take it off and put it in an archive. Okay. But it happens that sometimes you need that package, but it is currently not in the list of packages because they have archived it. You cannot install it. You have to go through this method that I'm, I am doing now. So you go here, you download the package. It will be on your laptop. Then when you are in now, instead of going to the CRAN repository as a source, you click over there and say package archive file. Is that okay? Then you click on this. Once you click on it, that will just open it, um, the, the file I resizing. But if it is not stored there, you navigate. So remember, I just downloaded it, so I'm sure it will be in my downloads. So I click on downloads, and you see insurance data. Uh, over there. Then I load it. When you load it, remember this one is only that package. So remember the dependencies. So usually it will tell you that in this no file, this no file. So it means you need to go back and then be doing the same process to get the dependencies. You won't know the importance of this. Only when you will see. So the, the first one that I was showing you, that's one of the things we went to. So otherwise you waste your time. And I, I have had experience in this. So sometimes when I was doing my PhD, I spent about six months trying to implement something. They have done it, but I needed to tweak it, to do something else. And I tried over and over and over and over and over and over again. So that I will never forget. So it wasn't working. So those is, um, this, this uh, stack, stack overflow. Good. Okay. So, I mean, that time I had time. So I, I was also contributing. People will put their, their uh, uh, problems there, then you contribute. So I was like, why don't I put this thing there? So not knowing that all I needed was three dots to like this. So because of this, I spent about six months. Sometimes I leave it and then my supervisor will ask me, have you made progress? I bro, still, because he, he doesn't do programming. So, but of course, to do programming, it must correspond with the theory. So when we are doing, I really know because I'm not getting what is actually in the bounds. So I put a problem, and then somebody from somewhere said, Oh, I can get it from the package by putting this. And then I put, and then I had all the functions, and I was able to take the function, modify it into a session. Then I was able to now compare the method I was doing with what is existing. Okay, so it's important that you join some of them. You see the conversation that is going on around, around the world. And then you fit in. Because we have a global community now. So R is global. You have a problem. Somebody is maybe in Estonia and so forth. And through that, you can build collaborations as well. So, so please make sure you sign up for those kind of things. Else. Okay. So if you were installing it's not working, it might be somewhat dependent to go back because I will prompt you on that and the package, then you go back and install it. But by the time you do that, you'll be able to. So an assignment that I'll give you will be this. Um, so you see what I was talking about. So what we did, this one, I had to even email those that were, um, where did I, I started with? I've forgotten the package name. You see this silly. Who are heard of logistics before? Everybody. Okay. What, what, what is it? What, what is it? Okay, 
Take the data. Maybe about three percent were refused. The ninety-seven percent or whatever they were all given. Okay. So if compared three percent to fifty, that's that's highly imbalanced. So what do you do under under that case? Or sometimes it may be even be zero point something percent, right? So under that case, no decent rejection will not help you that much. So here we were looking at. Um, there are two um, schools of thought that you can weight you can weight them. So one procedure says that weight them so that those without uh, that are small will get smaller weight. Okay, and then the majority of them, those who were granted, will get all. Okay, okay, that's a, that's that's the concept. Now. The other one is that, you know, when you are in a screen, we have distributions that are, let's say, it has longer tails, right? So, for example, the generalized extreme value distribution is for a stream, okay? So, it gives more um, um, emphasis on the tails rather than the central term, unlike the logistic structure. So her work was to now, you know, the methods are there, but they have not been assessed. So what we did, we, we did a simulation. So that's what I was saying. That, okay. So the simulation is that you do it on your computer. It, it is not real, but you mimic what will happen. What did we do? We got a data set on wars, whether there will be outbreak of war or not, depending on several other. And then we vary the percentage. So we take one percent, two percent, three percent is up to an appreciable level. And each of them you are checking um, forecasting ability, the effect sensitivity, and accuracy. That's what we want to get to. That when you hear this person, and when you finish you can display your graphs and, and, and so forth so that's 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 it where we will be getting to okay so um what what we have done when you go home try and install this okay i'm sure you'll get problems but that's to help you to understand this so that is for the weighted regression, weighted logistic regression. So, but when you are installing it, it will give you problems here and there. But at the end of the day, you will get it. As I said, you go to the CRAN site, you download, then you keep it, and then in your uh, install, instead of the CRAN, you now do your local drive, then get it. So try it and let's see. The next thing is health. So in now, if you don't understand anything, health. Check for health. Help out. To to get help, we only use the the question mark. 
So when I question anything, I won't talk on it. So for example, um, so get any help. Okay. So you use as a question mark. Okay. So one question mark maybe um let's see. mean okay so i question mark then i run it then i get what i get mean but what happens is that if, if you now on the right hand side you it get it, it gets to what help right and then it tells you that mean what you are looking for is mean the curly bracket what is in the curly bracket is so the mean is a function, it is in the package base. So whatever you have in the curly bracket is a package. So R deals with packages and the functions will be in those packages. So base is a package. Now, if you click on packages and you scroll down to the B column, you will see, but it should be, the, you will see it easier because I have so many system libraries. So that's the first package you have in your system library. And you see that it is ticked. When it is ticked, it means it is available now for you to use. If it is not ticked, you won't have access to it content. So you load the package by clicking on that. It is the same as the command library. So that's why on the top, I had library. And why do I put library and not ticked? Well, you see, we, you've been to 203, right? The computer room. You haven't been there. You did your orientation there. Okay. So there are computers there that we use. You don't need to be there. They, they are HPCs. So we have an interface during your work. You can use it. Right? We have an interface. So R is on it, but I can sit here and operate it. So I won't put pressure on my laptop. When I was doing my PhD, sometimes my programs will run for like a week or two. There are some that run for more than three months. Yeah, it's it's especially those in physics. When when we're in Stellenbosch University, they, the physics they do a lot of things. Those who are doing material science and so forth, they do a lot of simulation. So they have big 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 big, big computers. They call it Ras Santa computers. You, you you won't see, but it's a huge area. So what? So I could sit here when I'm in Ghana, I'll still be working because I have access to the computer. So there you are not there to be clicking. Okay, so you do you write all your program just like I have done. So if I want it, I want the package, I ask the administrator to install the package because usually they won't give you the right to be installing something. So yeah, so they install it for you. Even here we have some as well at um Biochemistry, and you, um, Professor Wandari's place. Um, what do we call it? Wagbib. They also have very good ones. I've used it for some of my works. Um, uh, they are very good. They have World Bank sponsorship. They, I mean, in millions of dollars. So they bought very state of the art, and you can have access to it as well if you are doing your work later on. And then I think Waki too have some. Because they all have funding. We are we are yet we have some, but it's all up to up to those ones. But the, the one big one I've used is very fast and they, they are way up, up there. So it means that you, you won't have interaction with the program. On your laptop, you can run and stop and go and no, it's not like that. So if you are using an HPC, you run all what you want, you put it there, you run it, you leave it. And then when you come back, you are coming for your results. Your results may be a table or it may be a graph and what have you. That's, that's where we get into. So there, you instead of taking, it must be live. So, okay. Now, so that that's that's what the help is. Okay, that's what. And then, yeah, I think that, that should be all. So once you know this, what we have talked about, you are good to go. The next thing is how do you save? 
okay so as you can create a folder okay so first of all your session must be saved if your session is saved your workspace everything is saved okay so go to session then you say save workspace then you can now create a folder, right? So create your folder. I have a folder. Okay, this is the first time. Um, so I'll create a folder, start 621. Okay. And then I click on it and I say save. Um, no, I haven't given it a name. Okay, so I will say start 621. And then I save. Now, look at what is on the console. So what I did, the clicking and so forth that I did, is equivalent to what? Using save.image and so forth, so that everything will be saved in that file. Okay. Now, if I want to, you can also um, set your working directory, which is also good. Okay. But before then, let's save the file, this file. Ooh. My laptop is almost off. So you click here. Um, and then um, I have to navigate now. But um, uh, no, no, I think I'll do it the other way around. Um, I'll set my working directory to, I have to choose a directory. So I go and look for my laptop will go off. But I'll send you the recording. Uh, Starts. Six two one. Okay, there. Okay, so you see, it's also it's the same. I was set WD right. Set WD means you are setting your working directory. Okay, to now it is over there. So now, if I want to save, it will give me the first. That's the first folder it goes to. Okay, so I can give it a name. Start six two one. You see, some have been saved already. So start save to one. Then I save it like this. So you see, it's there. So now my script is saved, right? So you this the script saved saves. Uh, so you you have to save your script. There's also the environment that will be our data, and then also there is a history which will be dot our history. Okay. So now if I if I, if I want to log out, I can click over here. It asks me, do you want to save the workspace? Do you want to also save the, the script? You see, I have um, Anita simulation, right? So that, you see, I went in to change certain things. So now it wants me to save it as well. Okay. So if I go into that folder, I want to show you the folder you will see what is in there let me scroll down Start six to one. there so you see there are two files one is the workspace which contains everything that we did including what we stored which is the dot r data then the r file is just the spring that we 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 use okay if i close it over here um usually you get oh usually there should be a history but it didn't it didn't come maybe the next time we we start our studio we should get the history okay. so now if i start our studio again i'll still get to see my okay so it is actually starting from my previous one so you see, because we were doing the simulation, we stored everything. So it went there and it is giving us all the data. You won't have that. But you see all the things that we were doing, I was doing with her. You see all of them over there. Our CS212 is there. Everything with it. Find it over there. Okay. So I think that, that is enough for today. Um, now when you go Please, this, the, what I, I'm doing it. Take your time and first, just watch to see what is going on. And then you now can play back.
and traffic on your own. That is the most important thing is to know how the structure of a data set is in act. It's very important if you want to program and then not get an error at all. So please take your uh, the time, go through it, practice it, so that you have firm grounded of all the data structures and the data types we have in that, and then we take it up from there. Okay, so I will leave you here. Is there any question? That's okay. So um, tomorrow when you come and there's any free time and you just let me know.